All right, we're going to go on to the main subject, believe it or not, here, <laughs> which is on the convention of the on the convention on the rights of persons with disability. It's a United Nations treaty, and you can go to the Parental Rights website, parentalrights.org, and um, and of course, what they're promoting though is a constitutional amendment that says um, parents have a fundamental right in the upbringing and education of the children. And uh, that's in the best interest of the child, uh, that parents have this fundamental right. And the state then has to come in and actually have evidence in order to take this away from a parent. So I, we want it, but they're promoting that constitutional amendment. But there's another issue going on right now that is raising its head that also has to be stopped. It was stopped last year in the Senate because the Senate ratifies treaties and this Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability is another treaty that's trying to be ratified uh, by the United States uh, with the United Nations. And we're gonna go through the first graphic to see why there's a problem. We're gonna go through 15 problems with this treaty. And the first problem is the best interest of the child standard in Article 7.2 provides courts and government agencies rather than parents the authority to decide what is best for children with disabilities. Now um, that, that means also that um, decision and policy makers or they're going to substitute their own decision making for the parent and it's the parent that has to live with these children, it's the parents that has authority over these children, and the parents will not get a say in how their ch child with disabilities should be treated or taken care of. And remember, the parent has the number one best interest of the child. It is presumed in law that the parents are gonna act in the best interest of the child. And so in order for the state to intervene, they would have to prove evidence, evidentiary-wise, that the parent is not acting in the best interest of the child. In this situation now, with the Convention on the Rights of Person Dis Disability, that would be taken away. The assumption that parentals, parents are acting in the best interest of the child is taken away and substituted with somebody from some other country, the United Nations, saying what's in the best interest of the child. So it's, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not good. Uh, international legal scho scholar Geraldine Van Buren, who helped draft the Convention on the Rights of the Child, which contains an identical standard, admits that this standard provides decision and policymakers with the authority to substitute their own decisions for either the child's or the parent's, pro providing it is based on considerations of the best interest of the child. And if anybody knows the court system, the best interest of the child is a standard that says whatever the court decides. It's the best interest of the judge, best interest of the state. It's, it's never best interest of the child. It doesn't work that way. Uh, it can't work that way. And so the parents are left out of the picture. Okay, number two critical issues with the uh, second critical issue with the conventions on the rights of persons with disabilities. Article 23 section 4 implicates this best interest of the child standard in all cases involving the removal of children with disability from their parents care. Now under current United States law the government is authorized to determine what is best for children only if parents have been determined by court to be unfit or there is dispute between the two parents. Of course, you see that in divorce cases all the time. The Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability would give the government this presumption of power in all cases involving children, removing the necessity of first proving that the parents have acted in a harmful manner. This dramatically increases the authority of government to remove children from their homes and to override parental decisions by doing away with the current high standard of protection for parental rights. See the danger coming in on this uh, treaty? Okay, let's go to number three. 
a parent's prior right to direct the education of their child disappears under the Conventions on the Rights of Persons with Disability. Article 24 on education omits the right of parents to choose the kind of education that shall be given to their children found in the Universal Direct Declaration of Human Rights, Article 26.3, and in the Individuals with Disability Education Act. Now in law, what is excluded is often as important as what is included. And you're going to find that with Chief Just, or Justice Scalia on the Supreme Court in his decisions. He says that parental rights, although uh, meant to be a fundamental right by the Founding Fathers, it is not in the Constitution that way. It's a high right, but not a fundamental right. And only Clarence Thomas ruled that parental rights are a fundamental right. Um, so if it's left out, then if the education piece, that parents have that right to educate their children, it's left out of this treaty, that right then is assumed not to be in there. So these rights have to be declared in the treaty in order for you to have that right. And it's a, it's a, it's a big, big issue and a big, big concern. Okay, the fourth critical issue, Article 23.3, demands that the national government prevent concealment, abandonment, neglect, and segregation by providing early and comprehensive information services and support to children. This suggests a Scotland-like child, like child services program for disabled children from birth. Okay, Scotland is pursuing a program of appointing a government social worker for every child in the nation from birth as a means of complying with the, their international duties to protect children. The provision of such early comprehensive programs threatens the privacy of the home, just as the NSA is spying on all our phone calls. These intrusive treaty provisions invite government spying into our families. Uh, I mean, do you understand that? I mean, I mean, there's a big problem with NSA and listening to our phone calls and they're admitting to it. Okay, they're finally admitting to the, they're violating the Constitution. And uh, now Scotland is saying social worker in every home from birth on. And, and the only purpose of that, I mean, I mean, there, there is no purpose other than to control every aspect of your life. And, of course, our country wasn't founded on government control of every aspect of our, of our life. We separated not only for religious freedoms, uh, but so that the government, we'd have the, the ability to um, freely associate with who we wanted to associate with. Okay, now Germany, home educators, or educating your homeschoolers, as we call it here, um, has already been lost in Germany. And parents are being arrested and thrown in jail. And there's, there's a couple that has come over from Germany and they got their kids taken away uh, because they wanted to be able to homeschool their kids and, and Germany took the kids. And, and, and there's other couples that are, have been arrested over there. I mean, that's, that's what this treaty will do. And instead of um, what happened is the treaty on the, on the Convention on the Rights of Children, that was a straight up treaty that was saying, yeah, we're gonna do all this. We're gonna take away all these rights. They couldn't get that passed. Okay, so now they're sneaking it into the uh, Convention on the Rights of Children with dis uh, 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 Persons with Disabilities. Okay, let's look at the fifth problem here. Children with disabilities shall be registered immediately after birth. Uh, this provision would be a treaty obligation of the national government, not the states. Okay, so we don't work that way here in the United States. This would require that the federal government establish a nationwide database of all children with disabilities. Although the states could be made the agent of the federal government for this purpose, the data would be available and controlled ultimately 
by the federal government since under general treaty law, the national government is responsible for compliance with all treaty obligations. Uh, just, just makes sense that they would do this. So we see this national database, not a state database, uh, where the national government would have all this information on every child with disabilities. And of course, our country was founded differently. And this goes against the principles of, our, of the founding of our country that the states are the uh, petri dish and the states decide these issues and not the national government. But if the senators sign this treaty, then it becomes uh, in effect, and that's actually another way around Obamacare, to get Obamacare placed at least on the children with disabilities and uh, get that national government intrusion into the home. Okay, uh, the sixth uh, problem here. Domestic activity currently in the sphere of state power would be transferred to federal authority. Okay, Article 4, Section 1E would eliminate state sovereignty in the area of disability law by demanding that all American law be conformed to the standards of the United Nation. And two, making the federal government responsible to see to its implementation. In addition, Article 33.1 calls for a new national bureaucracy to ensure that all levels of government, that would mean state and local, comply with the convention. So we got this huge national bureaucracy getting ready to come down on the people of Minnesota and every other state, especially if, if you have a child with disabilities. And you have enough burdens with the child with disabilities to have the federal government, or in this case, now a, a national type government, overlooking every aspect of your life with your child and having somebody in your home making sure you're doing things right. And believe me, if they want to take your child away, if you make an innocent mistake or you don't make a mistake at all, but they make an allegation, you're messed up. You know, you're messed up big, big time. Okay, uh, number seven. Uh, and, and actually, this is a good point here, is that it may not be the state coming in. It may not be the national government coming in. It might be the United Nations under um, North Korea. Well, they're probably not. Yeah, they're part of, are they part of the United Nations? I don't know. But um, Iran, uh, Iraq, you know, the Muslim countries, the Islamic countries are part of the United Nations. They would be able to come in and tell you how to run your family. Um, okay, uh, number seven, the same article for section 1E applies to any person, organization, or private enterprise. Okay, not just the family. This will involve the federal government as a party to the convention in private lives to an unprecedented degree unless modified by a valid reservation, understanding, or declaration I'll go into what that means. The treaty would make every private home owner, for example, responsible not to discriminate against persons with disability by failing to have wheelchair ramps and other accommodations in their homes. If you understood what that meant, that means you may not have a disabled person in your home, but now you have to have a ramp, you have to have a, a bathroom that's accessible, uh, for a person with a disability, um, handrails, whatever, you now have to have them in every single home. Okay, now, there's a phrase here that says, unless modified by a valid reservation, understanding, or declaration. What that means when a treaty is passed, okay, the United Nations has a treaty. They lay it out, all the documents, here's this treaty, here's what we want. And the United States can go in there and say, we like this treaty. However, what we don't like is this. So we're not going to do this, 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 and this. It's a, it's a um, modification 
uh, or it's a reservation. We reserve the right to do this. Um, we reserve, we got an understanding that we get to do this, even though your treaty says that, and we declare that we still have these rights. Okay, unless you write that into that treaty, um, it doesn't happen. It's going to happen the way the treaty says it's happened. Uh, so, <clears throat> and of course, we in the founding of our country, that's what the British were doing. They were coming into the homes. Uh, and before we started the Revolutionary War, they're saying, you've got to feed us, you've got to do uh, all this other stuff. And, you know, I, I, I got something on the trans, uh, on the uh, teleprompter here, and I don't know what that word means. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't doesn't help me here. Uh, I got a great staff that gives me all kinds of ideas to say and things to say, and I th thought they made a good point there, but I don't understand what a word means. <laughs> that is, we like to have this dialogue going on. Okay, but the soldiers would just take things because they could. Uh, so that they can get their supplies that they needed from people and they just take it. Okay, um, all right, let's go to number eight here. There is no specific definition of disability. Can you believe it? You got a treaty and yet they don't define what a disability is? For a convention covering persons with disability, this is a glaring and dangerous weakness. It is also a significant divergence from the Americans with Disability Act, which provides at least a general definition of disability. Instead, we are told that the definition of disability is an evolving concept. It is unwise to agree to protect all disabilities without a proper and clear definition. I mean, that's what law does. Law establishes and defines the relationship between things. And can you imagine all the lawsuits that are going to take place because the word disability isn't defined? And it needs to be defined so that we know how to operate. And the treaty does not do that. And you, and you can say, boy, that's a, something they're just overlooking and they're not understanding. Uh, they just forgot. No, it's intentional. That means they can define it as they see fit, and they can make it up as they go. And you're left with no rights whatsoever. And that's the problem with, in this case, people trying to control too much. Uh, and it's just a way to get in and to control everything. That's all. Okay, we're uh, running out of time. And we, <laughs> we got about uh, seven more of these to go. Okay, number nine, ratification would sanction an ongoing supervisory role by the UN in the governance of virtually all areas of American life. So the United Nations Treaty would determine how you can write your state statutes, how you write your laws. Uh, it, would, it would affect every aspect um, it would, you'd, everything would have to be interpreted and determined by how the treaty is written, okay? And they have committees, and these committees are just appointment, appointed people, uh, and they don't have any compulsion to accept um, uh, and have the authority to officially interpret the meaning of the treaty, yet they do it anyway. And the UN Committee sets the mandates via interpretation and international law would hold that the United States is in violation of its legal obligations unless it carries out these mandates. The United Nations would be telling us what to do. We can't have this treaty. Number 10, Articles 23 and 25 include language that establishes an obligation for the government to provide and fund abortions. Okay. Uh, Article 23 uses United Nations uh, catchphrases uh, to establish abortion rights for persons with disabilities. Sections 1 and 1B provide state parties shall take appropriate measures so as to ensure that the rights of persons with disabilities to decide freely and responsibility on the number and spacing of 
their children and to have access to age-appropriate information, reproductive and family planning education are recognized and the means necessary to enable them to exercise these rights are provided. This right to the means necessary to enable them to make reproductive and family planning decisions has been used elsewhere to claim a right to abortion. So it goes on and on, but it eventually will trump any state's laws. For example, you have a number of states now, no abortion after 20 weeks, after 24 weeks, after 12 weeks, no abortions from conception. The United Nations Treaty would trump all those states' uh, laws. That's why it can't be ratified. Number 11, ratification of the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities would mandate entitlements as rights for the first time in U.S. domestic law. That's a key issue. Entitlements as a right under, for the first time under U.S. domestic laws. Entitlements aren't rights right now. And that would change under the United Nations Treaty. It's a, it's a huge thing. Okay, number 12. Article 25 requires that government provide those health services needed by persons with disabilities, specifically because of their disabilities. On its face, this language appears to call on the government to fully fund all disability-related health care for persons with disabilities. So there's no checks and balances. If you ask for it, you get it, you want it, you got it. Um, and without this definition of disability that's in the treaty, there, there's none there. Uh, and including uh, early identification and intervention, this presents a literally unlimited financial burden on taxpayers. Okay, there's just, it just goes. You're just gonna pay for it, and there's no checks and balances. It ends up being uh, a wasteful situation. Okay, 13, ratification of this treaty would require the U.S. to pay to help poorer nations implement the convention. So we'd be ending up paying for the other nations to put uh, disability rights uh, into their countries and um, uh, those nations, you know, uh, wouldn't pay for it themselves and wouldn't, wouldn't have to. Okay, 14, Article 15's prohibition of degrading treatment or punishment applies to all children, not just children with disabilities, and has been interpreted by the Committee on Rights on the rights of the child to outlaw all forms of corporal punishment, however mild. Okay, so you want to spank your kid, it'd be outlawed. Um, and just, and actually for that matter, an allegation would mess you up. Okay, number 15. Any reservations, understandings, and declarations, again, these are uh, caveats. These are the United States saying we're not going to participate in this part of the, uh, the treaty, uh, any of those adopted by the Senate could be rejected by either the UN committee or by American courts if they find that our reservations, understandings, and declarations are contrary to the object and purpose of the treaty. In other words, what good does it do to have these reservations? to have these declarations, to have these understandings, if the United Nations can just go and ignore it and say, no, nah, those don't apply to the treaty, but you ratified the treaty, your reservations don't apply, uh, too bad, see you later. Um, that's, that's the way it goes. Uh, we're, we're taking over anyway. Folks, this is a dangerous treaty. It sounds good on the surface, but it will take away parental rights in, in many cases, and we can't have this precedent take place. Call your senators and say, no, we don't want this to happen. Don't sign on to this treaty. Now, Amy Klobuchar and Al Franken have already voted for this treaty, and we can't have it, and it takes a uh, two-thirds vote to ratify a treaty. And uh, we stopped it before. All right. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you don't stand up for other people's liberties, who's going to stand up for yours? 
and good men don't do nothing. God bless. We'll see you next week. your love.